I got some puppies going home and I got some uh, young dogs that just came in. So let me show you how I handle that transition period. I'm going to take a dog that's already good at something and I'm going to walk around and I'm going to have a good time with the dog that's already good at something. Well what my goal is is that the new dogs who aren't very good at stuff, they'll see us having a good time and they'll want to tag along and be a part of the process. Come on buddy, let's go. So I'll take a couple of these dogs that are already good at stuff. I'll probably use Boomer and Eddie here. And I'll just take them through the course. And when the new dogs like Tilly or like this little dog here follow along or this guy here who's a year old, we're doing remedial training with him, follows along, then I'll reward them. Come on. So you can see Boomer and Eddie here, they know exactly what's going on. Now Tilly doesn't, so you see Tilly stopped right there. So what I did is I'm noticing Tilly, I said, hey, I, I appreciate the effort, you don't have to do it perfectly. And this dog just barely approached the jump. I appreciate that too. You know, what we work on here is building good uh, foundation based on incremental process. So see how I took my time and rewarded Tilly, she finally made it over that jump. Let's see if I can get this, same, this dog to do the same thing. Good. Now I don't need to get this dog to come all the way over the jump, so I'm not going to spend much time doing it. I'm going to say, hey, that's good enough. You walked up to the jump, you thought about what you were doing, that's, that's a good start. I'm going to come to the tires. Boomer goes right up the tires. Okay, and I'm going to wait. Okay, obviously Eddie knows how to do the tires. Now let's see what's going on back here. Here's this same little yellow lab puppy. And she's walking up to the tire. Now here's Tilly, black lab puppy. Tilly says, I can get on those tires. Let's try to get, let's see if we can get some feet up on that tire. That's good. That's a good enough start. I don't have to, I don't have to have perfection. I just have to have progress. Come on, Boomer. Be sure-footed. Now I'm going to come up here. Very, very nice. On my railroad crossing. Good. Very, very nice. Everybody's falling in line like they're supposed to. Very good. Now, so this, everybody's doing fine. This yellow lab's back here. And uh, I don't know if you can see her, but look. She, she followed right along. She wants to do it. She just doesn't know exactly how. So we're going to take a moment. Oh. And we're going to say, look, it's pretty easy. Just get her feet up here. Maybe step around. Oh, that's very nice. And again, listen guys, I do not have to have the dog, you know, I'm not trying to get mastery on its first day. I'm just trying to get the dog started. So walking up to an obstacle, putting your feet on an obstacle, making any attempt to negotiate the obstacle, that's good enough for us. Very good. Now look at Tilly. She's been here a little... Uh, Little, a few more days, so she says, hey, I got this on lockdown, I'll do it. Boomer, he knows it like a pro. Come on, Boomer. Oh, very nice. It's so windy out here. Oh, very nice. Good dog. Oh, come on, little puppy. All these guys are doing it very well. This puppy says, what's going on over here? Oh, so just feet. Just having her feet up there. That's pretty good. I like it. Good. And that's enough on that obstacle too. If I can just get this yellow dog to make some attempt to negotiate each obstacle, I will consider today a great success. There goes Eddie. There goes Tilly. Little puppy. Little puppy. What are you doing way over there? Do you not see these guys? You got to come follow in line with these guys. Good. So I'm going to back up down here. Oh, good dog. Dropped my phone, of course. See if I can get her feet up here. Oh, look at those feet up on the obstacle. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. That's plenty. Good. Look at Boomer. Waited for me like a champ. Good dog. Easy. Good. Now I'm going to go back around over here. Start back on this little jump here. Look, Tilly's got it down. Boomer's starting to get it pretty well. Now watch, I'm just going to keep positioning my body in such a way as that jump is between me and the dog. Now look, half her body got over it. That's awesome. And then the rest of her body. And I'm going to come back over here like this. Now you look, look at Tilly. She came over here and did this all by herself. That's awesome. Now, look at this dog here. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh my gosh. 
There we go. Come on, Boomer. Show them how it's done. Look at Boomer. Boomer's a champ. Now, see, look at that dog. It ran around there. Now, look, guys, a lot of times in training, you'll get a little frustrated, but that makes common sense. Why would a dog spend excess energy to climb something that could easily be walked around? Okay, so you got you to gotta really take great effort not to be frustrated here. Dog doesn't understand, you know, what you want right off the bat, so you have to spend some time teaching them. <laughs> and so the best teaching is done by putting a dog in the right mental state to want to learn, right, and then doing the activity with the dog so that it seems like a fun process and the learning is intuitive. See how, like, I move away from the dog and the dog wants to follow me. If I can position the dog in relation to this jump in such a way that the most efficient way to get to my body and get to this reward is to jump, then that's what she'll do. Good. Now, if I come down here too far, right here, and I go to moving backwards, the dog will walk around it. Now look guys, is that dog, is that dog for some reason trying to be disobedient? No. Okay? The dog just is using common sense. If, if I can get around this and not have to use a lot of energy, that's what I'll do. If the most simple way to get to Stony is to jump the thing, then that's what I'll do. So make the training understandable for the dog, you know? And you'll notice I'm not using much in the way of words here, okay? Like when you're teaching this style, learning by doing, there's not a lot of talking. Now look, the dog's making, you see right there, the dog made a decision. Where it was, it said, is it going over the easiest or going around? It decided that going around was the easiest. So watch, I'm going to position myself differently this time. I'm going to come back this way. Good. And the easiest way to get to me is to negotiate that obstacle, not go around it. Now I'm going to negotiate, now I'm going to put myself here. Good. Same thing happens. Good. And I've got Boomer setting the example. Good. So she sees Boomer do it. Ah, she says, well, I can do it too. Now what Tilly's done is she's found herself a perch. And she says, well, I'll just stay up here and do this because this is cute. And Stoney always notices me when I'm doing this. So I say, hey, I appreciate that. So when the puppies first get here, my primary goal is to just make sure that they understand that when we come out here and we start training, that we're just looking for fun, mentally and physically challenging activities to do together. It's not me forcing these things on the dogs. Okay, if you do good obedience, the dog understands in a very short period of time that coming and being still and having good manners and negotiating obstacles and learning a basic vocabulary works out to the dog's own advantage. It's not something I'm forcing on the dog to do, it's something I'm helping the dog to do. Very nice. Good girl, Tilly. Good. Now we're going to walk, walk our way through our little grassland here. Oh, look at Tilly. Falls right along. Very nice. Now right now, is Tilly walking just because she's with me? Or is she walking because Boomer's doing it? Or these other puppies? I'm sure it's multifactorial, you know. I'm going to come over here, do a foot placement drill, which Boomer's an expert at. Oh, and look, Tilly's already got it. All right, now let's see if this yellow dog can get it. Now again, what I'm going to be satisfied with is just some effort. Just some effort. People get too carried away and think that they've got to accomplish everything in one day, and that's never true. I just want this dog to come over here, see these other dogs climb on this board, and say, oh, wow, I want to do that too. I'm going to try. And what I'm going to reward is the effort. You know, like dog training is really subjective. And so what you have to, you, you know, you can't put these objective, uh, like, uh, criteria on being successful. The, these different dogs are going to perform at naturally different levels. They're not the same dog. They don't have the same life experience. They don't have the same physical or mental capacity, right? So what I'm always looking to do is reward effort, right? And so if this dog, if what I can get from a good effort level today is just to put her feet up there, I'm perfectly happy with that. Now, Boomer, watch out there, nerd, who's been doing it a little longer. Oh, watch out. I expect him to do it with, uh, you know, the relevant speed and precision. Come on, Boomer. Hup, hup. Oh, you're a very smart dog. Hup, hup, hup. So if I need him to go fast, he should go fast. If I need him to go slow, he should go slow. And look at Tilly following right along. Well, she's leading right now, I guess. Oh, good dogs. Now this guy here, this is a remedial trainer. Oh, he just got here this week. He's a year old. And he's really behind. 
So you have to be even more patient with him than you do with the young puppies. This guy's being good. Tilly's being good. Boomer, wait there for a minute while I come back here and address this. Wait. Good. Now look. Oh, I got some feet up here. Again, we're going to reward that because that's a good effort. And look at Boomer. See, you, you see that right there? You see how Boomer was able to turn around on that board? That's what we call good proprioception, good body awareness. His brain and his body are working well. They're working in conjunction with each other well. He has good balance. He has good body awareness. And that's cut from what we call toes to nose stimulation. In every training session, we're trying to make sure that the dog gets a lot of stimulation from the bottom of his feet all the way up to his little brain so that all of his systems work synergistically. Now look how Tilly's back here waiting and being patient. I say I appreciate it. And look at this little puppy. Waiting, being patient. Easy. Very nice. Yep. Good. Good. And a lot of times we'll come over here, we'll put the dogs on our little exam table. Good. Now, see, so what happens here, stay. I put Boomer up there, everybody else gets up there. Eddie, he's been here for a little while, but look at Tilly. She just says, well, if Eddie and Boomer can jump up on that table and good things can happen, I want to get up there to where that good stuff is happening. Now, this little dog is being very polite and waiting. But what we're going to try to do is see if we can't make some progress towards actually getting on the table. So I'm going to take a little bit of food. And she's going to walk over here. She's just walking over here. So I'll reward that level of effort. Now I'm going to pull my hand up a little bit. Oh, there we go. And that's a win for today. Now look at this dog here. This dog's a little older. So I have even, even less strict criteria for what I consider a win for this guy. Oh, uh, you want a treat? Good dog, Boomer. Now I take Boomer's leash off. I'll put it on Eddie. Oh, now the wind has blown my slide down. I have to put my slide back up. Now Amelia, this is a dog. She's over here for remedial socialization also. She's snipping and snapping at people at home. All right. So let's walk out in my field and see what else we can find to get into. Just walking around, <clears throat> letting the dog understand, you know, that uh, following me around is always gonna lead to fun and adventure. Oh, and we make adventure where we can. Look, I just got an old $12 barrel out here by this log. Good. We're gonna climb over it a few times. Come on, Eddie, you can do it. Very nice. Now you see Tilly, she wants to follow along and do it, but she's not exactly sure how to navigate that barrel. So I'm gonna get down here and help her a little bit. Here, Tilly. Okay, Eddie, you got it. Oh, come on, Tilly. Come on, Eddie. Good dog. All right, get off there, Betty. Oh, come on, Tilly, you can do it. Very nice. Get her up on that barrel. The barrel's shaky. So she's really having to learn to trust me right now. Good dog. Very nice. See how that barrel's so shaky? It's one of my favorite training tools, guys. You wanna talk about really developing good balance and good body awareness? Get you a barrel. Makes a big, big, big impression on them when they're young. Look at that. That's perfect. Good. Then I'll help her off. Whoa, very nice. All right, Eddie, you can do it one more time. Nope, nope, you can't cheat. Up, up. Oh, you're so smart. Good. All right. You just take off and walk around out here. Good dogs. Reward everybody for keeping up, going with me. You know, a big key with having dogs good off the leash is, you know, just making them understand that, uh, you know, you're an interesting person and you're headed to do interesting things. Who doesn't follow somebody that's headed to do something fun? And if you have access to some good off-leash mentor dogs, 
then the dogs, you know, they just grow up not knowing anything other than kind of going where the group goes. They go where the group goes and uh, good stuff happens. Now look at this old dog here. This dog's over a year old, just came here for remedial socialization, and it's already following along. Not because I'm some kind of amazing teacher and I've taught that dog that he's supposed to hang out with me, but rather because I'm coming out in the yard and these other dogs are following me around and it looks like whatever it is that we're going to do is going to be fun, right? Eddie, you have to poop right here on camera, dude, killing me. Oh, hello, Boomer. How are you doing? Very nice. Very nice. Oh, sometimes you gotta run from them. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And reward them when they catch you. Good dogs. Oh, where are we going? Hello. What are you doing, little yellow dog? Whoa. Ah. Oh, very nice dogs. There you go. There you go. Oh, come here, babies. Good dogs. Good dogs. Okay, guys, that's how I transition new dogs into the kennel environment. Get out there, work your dogs, have a good time.